Hi, my name is Tony Moy, and I'm a watercolorist and a comic book artist. And today I wanted to paint something for the Chinese Lunar New Year. Since it's the year of the pig, I decided to paint, paint my favorite pig from Studio Ghibli, um, Porco Rosso. I started off by sketching a couple roughs um, that you don't see here, but you see the one that I settled on, just to get a handle of the shapes and forms of Mr. Rosso. With the rough sketch as my guide on the right, I redraw the character on my arches watercolor block, tweaking the layout so that the scarves uh, flow, add some movement to it. And I'm also trying to get the perspective on the figure right, so he seems more noble and heroic with a slight angled upshot. As I prep the pencils for watercolor painting, I try not to shade too much as having too much graphite on the paper can interfere with the watercolors. With the first washes, I use a little bit of M. Graham's quinacridone rose and mix in a little bit of Indian yellow and azel orange to create a nice warm pink tone. You'll see me add a little bit more of the yellows and oranges in the lower chin as we get closer to the light source. In the shadows, I add a little bit of Carbazol Violet, um, especially as the cast shadow from the snout a little bit and, and just to create some form under the chin. Right now, my washes are very, very light, very watered down. With these early washes, I keep my washes pretty wet and just let my brush dance around almost haphazardly, saving a little white space here and there. Um, almost seems kind of random, especially in the jumpsuit. All the folds that will that we'll create later on will react to the patterns and textures that the watercolor dries with. We'll save a lot of the focus detail closer towards the face and we'll stay very loose and gestural as we get into the body of the jumpsuit. To get the fun organic textures for the clouds in the sky, I use the side of a larger brush and roll it across the paper. The little random jaggedy edges that it'll create and the white space that's left um, is, is kind of perfect for the randomness that happens with clouds in the sky. While it's still wet, I mix some zinc white gouache into the cerulean blue mixture for the sky. To hint at the light is emanating kind of from the horizon, um, I shift the cerulean blue to a soft greenish yellow. Uh, I imagine the yellow light hitting the blue sky a little bit and um, just making a shift towards that green. I'll keep the majority of the details um, in and around the, the face and head and the aviator's cap. And I try to stay consistent uh, with the colors of my shadows. You'll see as I jump around here, I start using touches of purple to indicate the deeper shadows. Earlier I mentioned I added some into the cash out of the snout and the chin. Now I'll add a little bit more under the arm area, a um, little more purple and violet into the casted shadows of the scarf, uh, especially under the neck. I streamed the painting of this live during a Twitch live stream, and someone asked about the references that I use, and you saw a quick view glimpse of my Google image search thumbnail page. I try to keep that thumbnail page front and center whenever I need to use references because it gives me a view of a variety of references. Um, it prevents me from focusing on any single one or two images and allows me to infuse more of my own 
artistic expression and interpretation into the piece instead of getting caught up mimicking or copying some other image. You'll notice I never saved any white space for the belt and that was unintentionally because with the lighter value of the jumpsuit, I knew that the heavier values of the belt would easily obscure anything going on behind it. I use some dark violets and lamp black mixture to simply um, overpower uh, the beige color underneath. And we left a little negative space there and that becomes easily the belt loop that holds the belt up. And now it's near the end of the painting and it's time to tighten up all the details, add in all the little embellishments. I kind of dance around looking for areas that I can contrast. Um, I want to hint at a little bit of a cast shadow from one of the legs of the scarf. And so instead what I do is on either side, I warm up two spots on where that shadow would fall with some Indian yellow. Um, so the shadow is just a cooler version of that beige. As a last touch, I bring out some watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell. Um, the watercolor pencils actually have lead that will dissolve in water, and so I can soften that up as well with a brush and some clean water at the end. So thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to support this channel, please click that like and subscribe button. It means more than you know. You can also visit me at my Patreon and on my Twitch channel. Um, the links are down below. If you'd like to own a print of this piece, uh, it'll be available on my online store. As always, take care, see you next time, and keep painting. Thank you so much.